Demon Slayer is, in my opinion, a really good anime. However, I cannot say the same for its newest season. This thing is straight doo-doo. Now, I mostly want to focus on the second half because I'm sure we all remember the first half. Or maybe you don't remember, actually. I mean, it was pretty forgettable. Tokito was the most bland, uninteresting character I've ever seen. They didn't even try to do anything with Mitsuri in regards to development or anything. And the villains were actually just sorry, bro. There were like six of them and they were all so trash. I mean, even the house demon from season one was better than these guys. At least he has some like depressing ass backstory. These guys were just so nothing. But this second half might be like even worse. And that's mostly because as a training arc, in my opinion, it kind of just fails. All the Hashira and Tanjiro train to achieve these marks, and this is fine. It's a cool goal for them to go for. But the issue is how they try to achieve this goal, which is like normal strength training. There is simply nothing special about the way they train. They just work out like how I'd expect Demon Slayers to work out and how we've seen them train earlier in the series. To explain why this doesn't work, try to think about other training arcs in anime. Most of them have a very specific exercise or way to train to achieve their goal. In Naruto, the first training segment of the entire story is when they learn to focus chakra in their feet. The goal is very simple, learn chakra control. And the way they learn it is by running up a tree. It's simple and makes sense in regards to the goal they're trying to learn. And this is the case for pretty much every training arc I can think of, like Naruto popping balloons to learn the Rasengan, the hide and seek segment in the Promised Neverland, or even in Demon Slayer itself when Tanjiro cuts the boulder. In the Hashira training arc, everyone just kind of does push-ups and stuff. I guess they're just hoping that this will give them the mark. And not that strength training itself is an issue, you can totally have a good training arc just by having that. For example, in the beginning of My Hero Academia. Deku only does strength training, but that arc still works. It works because it has direct correlation with the goal of the training, which is to get his body in good enough shape to be able to use the one for all power. It also works because it's something Deku is not used to doing, something he has pretty much never done before. The Hashiras have all done this type of training before. I mean, looking at the shape of some of them, I'd assume they do this stuff every day. And after like eight episodes of training, nothing was really gained. Like no one really got any stronger. The only person that got somewhat stronger was Tanjiro because Genya told him just breathe bro and Tanjiro was able to move the boulder. But this is the Hashira training arc and the Hashiras themselves made absolutely zero progress towards their goal of unlocking the mark. What's really weird is that most of the time they just train other demon slayers instead of trying to get better themselves. Some of them sparred each other a couple of times I guess but that was about it. And the Hashiras themselves are just not very interesting for the most part. When we first met them in season 1 one, I thought they all seemed pretty interesting and I actually wanted to get to know them better. But after finally getting to know them better, I gotta say, I want my time back. These are the most unpleasant people I've had the displeasure of spending time with, bruv. Instead of slowly introducing us to certain Hashira, it kind of just speedruns through all of them, having a new Hashira to focus on every episode, making it feel really formulaic. And because each one only gets one episode each, there's just not enough time for me to get invested in the character. Especially because most of them are absolutely insufferable. A criticism Demon Slayer often gets is how one note the characters are and how they'll repeat certain lines or personality quirks over and over and over again. Personally, I've never really had much of an issue with this, but some of these guys' personality is just being an asshole. And you know, that just doesn't really make them very endearing. And some of them aren't even good at being assholes, it just seems so forced. Like Sonami, this dude is so much of an asshole, he might as well be a villain. Like how does he save people for a living? It doesn't really seem like a job he'd enjoy. But the worst part is when he tries to kill Genya, or basically kill him anyway. Way. Because if Genya's presence and him just talking to him is enough for Sanami to want to kill him, surely this would have happened at an earlier point in the story. Like surely these guys have met earlier in the story, so why wouldn't he try to kill him before? It's like he's playing up for the camera, trying to see more evil than he is. And again, this dude is like straight up not a good guy. Like why is he here? And Baka got a weird case. Why is he around? Most of these guys just put me to sleep, man. I enjoyed seeing Tengen again. He's cool, and I like that he didn't just like. 
disappear from the story. But the only Hashira I really liked was Gyome. It actually felt like they tried to flesh him out, and I liked that he got to play an important role in the plan to take out Musan. Which, by the way, the whole last episode is absolute cinema. Musan has some Bollywood ass walk as he pulls up to Ubiyashiki, but everything that happens after that is so good. I love that the two of them talk for like 15 minutes straight. It really gives extra tension because it makes you more and more unsure of what exactly is about to happen. And Ubiyashiki cements himself as a really solid character. His dialogue is so damn cold, I mean he had more aura than Musan did. And his plan is really smart and worked as a good twist, although uh, did he really like murder his children in the process? Cause like that's kinda crazy. Couldn't they have just slept in another house? I mean I'm sure they did and that they're fine and it will be revealed later on, but if not, that's actually just insane. Even his wife, like was there really a reason for her to die as well? Anyway, the fight that happens later is so damn exciting because every character is involved. Everyone! Tamayo, Ubiyashiki, Tanjo, and all the Hashiras show up to take on the final boss. Also, I love how it's just on sight when they see Musan, especially Tanjo. He just goes for the kill instantly. The small amount of fighting we get is really good, and it somehow manages to end the season on the most exciting cliffhanger ever. Also, I love how Senizu gets like the coldest scene ever. I can't say I really enjoyed this season, but I gotta say I'm excited for the future. Well, Kinda, anyway. Because it's been announced that the future of Demon Slayer will be at three movies, and personally, I'm not a big fan of that, and I have a video coming soon about why, so make sure to subscribe to catch that video, and in the meantime, make sure to check out this video about another anime that really disappointed me.